Welcome. So I'm Bernal Surya. I'm a PhD student at Georgia Tech. And today I'm going to talk about a topic and the intersection of random graphs and randomized algorithms. And this is joint work with Mike Morrow and Lutz Flanker. So to put our work in context, let me first talk about the random D process. So the random D process is a random graph process where you start with an anti-graph on n vertices. And then in each step, you add one random edge such that the maximum degree in the graph stays less than or equal to D. So for example, if you end up with a regular graph, then you cannot add any more edges, right? Because then you'll break the maximum degree constraint. So you don't always get a regular graph at the end, but in actually in 1991, Lushinsky and Warmup proved that if there exists a regular graph on n vertices, the process indeed ends with a deregular graph with high probability. For all purposes, we'll assume that the final graph is a deregular graph. And so this is a very interesting process because it's the simplest and most naive way of constructing the regular graph. And you can think of it as a natural random greedy algorithm that you can use to generate the regular graph. Now, quite interestingly, this process is not so well understood. In fact, the main question from Walmart from 1999, which is still open until now, is to answer the question, how similar are the D process and the uniform random deregular graph? And by uniform random deregular graph, of course, I mean the random graph you get by uniformly sampling from the set of all deregular graphs. And Walmart conjectured that they are similar, but at the same time, it's really unclear how to approach this problem from the technical side. Okay, so um, in this project, what we, what we consider is a variant of this process for arbitrary degree sequence. And what we'll show is that the random graph we get from this uh, random process, which we'll call GPDN, is not similar to the uniform random graph with the specific degree sequence DN, which we'll call GDN. And this is not similar when the degree sequence is irregular, right? So um, to make things clear, let me explain in more details what I mean by the generalized process for arbitrary degree sequence. And I'll do so by looking at an example. So here I consider the example where we have the degree sequence D5, which is 22233. And what I'll do is I'll put the maximum degree constraint 22233 on the five vertices. And then I simply do the same thing as before, which is adding random edges. And I'll keep adding random edges until eventually uh, we get a red vertex here. And here what we see is the red vertex has degree constraint two and is incident to two edges. So you cannot add any more edges incident to this red vertex. So we ignore the top vertex and we look at the green vertices and we move on and keep adding edges until everything is red and you get a graph with the desired TV sequence. And again, this process doesn't always end with this degree sequence, but it can be proven that it ends up with this degree sequence with high probability. So for all purposes, we assume that the final graph has this degree sequence. So our main result shows that the median process and the uniform model differ when dn is not almost regular and by not almost regular i mean that there's no degree in the degree sequence that appears more than 99 percent of the time right so of course 99 percent here is just arbitrary number that you can replace with anything less than one and our result states that if the bounded degree sequence dn is not almost regular then with high probability we can distinguish the dn process graph with the uniform random dn graph Okay, so today we will actually work with a very special case where the number of degree one vertex is between 1% and 99%. And this is much simpler and it avoids a lot of technical obstacles, but I think it gets the point across. So the proof idea of our theorem is to show discrepancy in edge statistic. And in particular, we will show that the number of one, one edges uh, which is the number of which is just edges with n points of degree one with high probability can be differentiated between the two models. And the proof technique for this is we'll apply switching on the DN process. 
Now switching can be thought of as some sort of weighted double counting and it will entail comparing the probabilities of graphs that slightly differ on um, probabilities of it being produced by the end process. And this is unique and new because usually switching is only applied to uniform models and not stochastic processes. And with this comes um, technical problems that we will overcome. Right? So let me say a few more words about what we actually do to distinguish the model. Right? Um, so we will look at the discrepancy in edge statistic and for notation we say that x11g is the number of edges with endpoints of db1 in g. And our result states that we can distinguish both models by looking at the number of 1-1 one -one edges. So I want to be more specific, there exists mu and epsilon larger than zero such that with high probability, the number of 1-1 one -one edges in the uniform model is concentrated around mu. And mu here is, of course, just the expected value of the number of 1-1 one -one edges in the uniform model. So we just want to show concentration around expectation, which is standard thing. And moreover, we will show that the number of 1-1 one -one edges in the DN process graph is not concentrated around that value and in particular it's actually not on that interval the high probability right so of course with this it is clear that we can differentiate these two models just by looking at the number of one-one edges if it's in the interval then it's a uniform model and if it's not in the interval then it's the dn process graph so showing concentration for a number of one-one edges is really a standard thing what you do is you look at the configuration model, um, which is just some model that's easy to analyze, and then you establish uh, the relevant concentration there, and then you can you can do so by looking by considering the second moment argument, for example, and then you can transfer this result to the uniform model. So this is a really a standard thing to do in this field, and we will not get into it. And in, in, <clears throat> we will actually try to spend the rest of the talk understanding the number of 1-1 one, one edges in the DN process graph. And we will do so by considering switching. So let me explain what I mean exactly by switching. Right? So, and I'll do so by looking at an example, which I think makes things really clear. So let's look at this graph G minus. And what you will do is you will pick two edges that are disjoint and each edge has exactly one endpoint of dv1 and the other so the other endpoint is of degree at least two and what you'll do is you'll switch this pair of edges with another pair of edges as in the right diagram here so you will get an edge with both endpoints of dv1 and another edge with both endpoints of dv at least two and what i want we all to notice here is that the number of one one edges is exactly one greater in G plus than in G minus. Right. So our goal is to compare the probability of the DN process producing G plus and the probability of the end process producing G minus. And this is really different from standard switching, right? Because you usually do it for uniform models. And what, what, what you usually do is you compare the size of different graph classes based on the number of one one edges. So you can ask perhaps, oh, how does the number of graphs with 99 one, one edges compare to the number of graphs with 100 one, one edges? And here the problem for us is we're looking at stochastic processes. So when you're thinking of the DN process, you're really, like you're getting a graph, of course, but you're also getting a sequence of edges, right, if you look at the history. So uh, when you look at a graph, there are many ways to create it based on a different order of edges, and different order of edges appears with different probability. So we really have to look at the order of edges, which matters here. And the solution to this problem is actually to simply be brave and expand the probability of the DN process producing G uh, based on the, all of the possible histories. So as you can see in, at the equation at the bottom, 
the probability of the end process producing G equals the probability of the end process returning sigma sum over all possible sigma order of edges of G. Um, so let me explain what our switching lemma for probabilities is going to be. So our switching lemma states that the, the end process produces uh, G plus with a slightly higher probability and the, the end process producing G minus. So here, if you recall, G plus has exactly one more of one one edges than G minus. So what this is stating really is that the end process has a slight bias towards producing more one one edges, right? Because in a uniform model, of course, the probability of producing G minus and G plus is just the same. So this is already a, a great first step for us in establishing discrepancy. And the proof idea of this switching lemma is to simply understand how switching affects the probability of the end process returning an edge sequence. And what I mean by this is when you think of an edge sequence in G minus, you can imagine um, that there is a corresponding sequence in G plus, which is the switch edge sequence. So by doing the switching, you can, you can basically correspond the edge sequence in G minus and G plus. And you can actually compare the probabilities of the DN process returning both of these two edge sequences. And by doing so, you can compare the probability of the DN process producing G plus and G minus. And the key thing here is that this complicated thing is somehow tractable. And so by, by expanding out the probabilities of everything, you get the desired result, the switching lemma. Well, this is very quite surprising for us. Now let me talk about a more standard switching result, which will be necessary for us to utilize the switching lemma for probabilities. So from the notation, we say that G is in the N if G has degree sequence the N. And we'll construct the following auxiliary graph. So our graph will be a bipartite graph where on one side we have GL, which is just grass uh, with the in, which has degree sequence dn, with L11 edges. And on the other side we have graphs with degree sequence dn, with L plus 1, 1, 1 edges. And what you do is you look at a graph in GL and think of it as G minus. And then you can pick a pair of edges that's appropriate and switch them to get a G plus. Right? So you can try to look at all the corresponding G pluses and add edges between them. And similarly, you can think of it as looking at a G plus in GL plus one and considering all the corresponding G minuses in GL. So, um, this you can compute the degrees of all of the vertices here. And the key point is that in the auxiliary graph, um, it is roughly regular when L is roughly mu. Where if you recall, mu is the expected value of the number of 1, 1 edges in the uniform model. So uh, combining this result with the previous switching lemma, we get that the probability of the DN process graph being in GL plus 1 is slightly greater than the probability of the DN process being in GL. So this really establishes that we have a bias towards having more 1, 1 edges. So with all the, uh, we have all the ingredients here to conclude the proof of the main theorem. So we state, uh, we, we define that n z to be the, num the graphs with degree sequence dn such that the number of 1, 1 edges minus mu in the absolute value is less than or equal to z. So our key point implies that the probability of a dn process graph being n and z over a probability of the DN process graph being in NZ plus 1 is less than the following term, which you can get by expanding this based on the probabilities of the DN process graph being in GL for the appropriate L. And you do the same thing for the denominator, and you can actually drop a few terms. And the idea here is by shifting things around, you can get the following expression. And of course, this expression is extremely reminiscent of the other expression we have on the previous slide here. And we know that this is greater than 1 plus epsilon prime. So the whole thing here is less than 1 over 1 plus epsilon prime, which is just 
something slightly less than one. And with this, we can really prove our result. And to do so, we look at the probability of a Lean process crash being in n epsilon mu. So being in an epsilon mu implies that the number of one one edges is in this black interval, which we do not want. Right, and then we can see that this is less than the following fraction because the denominator here is a probability which is less than one. Um, then the, you can express this as a telescoping product of these fractional terms. And of course, this fractional term is exactly what we bound earlier, and each of them is less than one over one plus epsilon prime. So taking into the power of epsilon mu, we get that this approaches zero. And as a conclusion, we get that the probability of being in this black interval is zero. Right, so the number of one one edges is with high probability in this blue interval for the DN process graph. And of course, I've been saying that the DN process graph has a bias towards producing more one one edges than expected. And indeed, we can actually prove that the number of one one edges is on the blue interval on the right. But um, this is quite technical, so we will not get into this in this talk. So the general case is actually slightly more complicated. And the reason for this is that the analogous switching lemma that we hope to be true is actually false. Right, so if you recall in the switching lemma, we say that, oh, there's this pair of graphs G plus and G minus, and it's more likely to produce G plus, which shows that we can demonstrate certain type of bias. But here, this is simply not true. So if we consider a, a similar model where we allow for multi edges, which is slightly cheating, but it's fine because there are actually examples where it doesn't allow multi edges, but it's simply too large. And, and the idea here is that the number of two two edges, which will be appropriate for us since the minimum degree is two, is greater here, right, in G plus. But actually the probability of get of producing G plus is less than the probability of producing G minus. So we do we cannot demonstrate a bias this way. So what you do instead is you basically look at a multi set of graphs. And then you do switching all at once on, on this multi set of graphs. And then you can show that there is a bias towards having more two two edges. And by doing this type of argument and averaging out and so on, you can extract our result back from um, a similar type of argument, basically. So let me summarize what we've done so far. So we showed that the DN process and the uniform model differ, right? And uh, more specifically, if the bounded degree sequence DN is not almost regular, then with high probability, we can distinguish the DN process graph and the random DN graph. And as a conclusion, we can say that the warm loss conjecture does not extend to the irregular case. Um, and the proof technique we use is switching for stochastic process, which we believe is a new thing. Um, so let me close with two open questions. One, are there other applications of switching to stochastic process? And this is very interesting for us because we haven't seen this before and we believe there's no good reason for us seeing more of this. And we'll, we'll be very interested in seeing more applications of this, basically. And of course, the most, still, I think the most interesting question in this general area is, whether or not Wormos conjecture is true for the regular random graph process. Um, yeah, it will be very interesting if someone can prove this. So, yeah, um, our work is still being polished, but hopefully it will be up on archive soon. Um, so if you have any questions, please feel free to email me. And thank you for your attention.